In fact, it reminds me of there was these two boys who uh, bought their mom a wreath of flowers for Mother's Day. And they were so proud of it because they used their own money. And they went to the flower shop and they bought it all by themselves. But mom was holding back laughter when she saw the ribbon across the wreath that said, rest in peace. (laughs) (laughs) And the older boy explained they thought it was perfect because she's always asking for a little peace so she can rest. (laughs) And Irma Bombeck once said, the easiest part of being a mom is giving birth. The hardest part is showing up for it each and every day. And Mother's Day is traditionally the day when children give something back to their mothers for all the spit that they produce to wash dirty faces, the old gum that they've held in their hands, all the noses that they've wiped, all the scraped knees that they made better with their kisses. It's an appreciation day for for making your children finish something that they didn't want to uh, or not believing them when they said they hate you or sharing their good times and their bad times and all the times in between. Now, their cards might not always reflect it, but what they're trying to say is, thank you for showing up every day. Thank you for being their mom. And as we celebrate Mother's Day today, I'd like to reflect on a verse from the Psalms. This is Psalm 127, verse 1 specifically, written by King Solomon. And he says, unless the Lord builds a house, its builders labor over it in vain. Now, unless you don't have a TV in your house, I'm sure you've seen uh, many of these like home renovation TV shows that are they're on like almost every different station now. Um, they have teams of experts who come in and, you know, renovate rooms or maybe, you know, redesign an entire house. How many of you remember, you know, going all the way back to Bob Vila, this old house? Anybody remember that show? Man, for, for a whole generation, Bob Vila was the most trusted name in home improvement, renovation, and repair. Millions of Americans tuned in to, to watch his show all through the 80s. I think it actually started like 78, 79, but it was so popular in the 80s. And since then, dozens of home renovation shows like that have come and gone in waves. We've had like Extreme Makeover, Home Edition, uh, Curb Appeal, Trading Spaces, and the list just kind of goes on and on. Uh, The most popular home renovation show in recent years uh, is a show called Fixer Upper. Uh, Anybody watch that one? Okay, okay, we got a few. That's good. My family, Ashley and I, watched that a lot when it first came on, and Abby really liked watching it, but it follows Chip and Joanna Gaines. Uh, who happen to be Christians, by the way, and they you know, help homeowners in Waco, Texas, transform their outdated and dilapidated homes into beautiful, stylish living spaces. Uh, their, their slogan throughout the first few seasons was uh, finding, helping people find the worst house in the best neighborhood and turning it into their dream home. Can you imagine, though, building or remodeling, maybe demolishing and building rebuilding an entirely new house without a plan. You know, just saying, let's wing it and see what happens. I mean, no reasonable person would think of starting a home renovation project or building a home from scratch without a well-thought-out plan or maybe even a, a blueprint from an architect. And yet so many couples today try building not merely their house, but their home without consulting God's divine design for marriage, family, or parenthood. You know, some of us have made such a mess just hammering away without consulting the master architect that we are desperately in need of a home makeover. And so this verse, Psalm 127 verse 1, is going to be kind of the cornerstone for a series of messages starting today on Mother's Day and culminating in six weeks on Father's Day all about God's design for the home. And today I want to share some of God's home building instructions for moms, especially moms with young kids at home still. And by the way, all of this applies to dads just as much as it does moms. But even if you're not a mom or a dad, don't tune out completely because these biblical principles will apply no matter what stage of life you're in uh, or what age you are or how many kids you have or how old they are. All of these instructions, by the way, are found in Psalm 127. 
Uh, as I said, Psalm 127 was written by King Solomon. Uh, and if you have a Bible or an app, go ahead and open it up there to Psalm 127 where you can follow along. First and foremost, this psalm speaks to us about the builder of our homes. The builder of our homes. Moms, as you set out to build or maybe remodel your home, remember the wise words of Solomon. Again, in verse 1, he says, Unless the Lord builds a house, the work of the builders is wasted. And the psalmist here obviously isn't talking about a literal brick and mortar house. Rather, he's talking about God's involvement in our homes, our families. This means that God needs to be at the center of everything that we do in our homes, that we must rely on him to guide and direct us as we build our own family, our home. God created families in the first place. It's his design and he knows how it's going to function best. Moms, it's important to remember that you are not alone in your efforts to create a loving and nurturing environment for your kids. And we have a God who cares deeply about us and about our families, who wants to partner with us in our building efforts. Think of God as, as the architect and designer and maybe the, the foreman on the job site as you are building your home. He is there to provide instruction and direction through the whole experience. But you've got to trust in his plan and work along with him throughout the process. And that means taking time to, to pray and to read the Bible and to seek God's guidance in all of your, all the different aspects of family life. And as you seek to follow God's will, you can trust that He's going to guide you in your role as the builder of your home. God wants to be intimately involved in the everyday life of, of your family. So moms, that means you've got to, to make sure that God's presence is felt in every room of your house. And you can do this by praying with your kids. Uh, I strongly urge parents to pray with their kids, especially when they're young. Make that a habit that they learn. And you can do it at bedtime or at meal times or any time that the Spirit moves you, any time that they're troubled by something. You can pause and you can pray with them. You can read the Bible to them. Uh, you know, when they're little, it's so important to read like those little children's Bibles with all the pictures and stuff in it. I've been reading uh, children's Bibles, well, with all of my kids, but now Ellie's the little one. And every single night before bed, she expects me to read the Bible to her. And if I don't, she gets a little irritated with me. Like last night, I was tired and wore out and I didn't want to do it. And she got a little upset. And I said, I tell you what, I'll read two chapters tomorrow if I can just go to bed tonight. <laughs> So that was my deal, and I expect her to hold it, hold me to it. But, you know, we've gone through multiple different children's Bibles. With Ellie, I'm on the third one now because we just read it cover to cover and then move on to the next one. And, and we've done that with all of our kids. And, yeah, it gets harder, you know, as the kids get older, as teenagers, they don't want to sit down and read the Bible with their mom and dad so much. But you just kind of evolve. You know, some of the things that we've done is reading a Bible plan on the, the Bible app together. And we just check off when you've read that day, you can kind of see that they're reading it. And even though you're not sitting in the same room together, you're still reading through scripture together. The goal is to just infuse your kids with God's life giving word, you know, fill their hearts and their minds with the word of God, because if you don't, the world is going to fill their hearts and minds with something. And it's usually not going to be anything good. So in addition to, you know, reading with them and praying with them, moms can work with God by modeling Christ-like behavior in their homes. You know, like Eric mentioned that, you know, we remember the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross in communion. And we, many of us have daily reminders of Christ's sacrifice by looking at the sacrifices our moms make for us on a regular basis, or maybe the sacrifices your moms made for you years ago. Modeling Christ-like character, building relationships with your family based on love and grace and forgiveness is what helps them to see Jesus in you and helps them to pursue Jesus for all of their lives. By relying on God and, and working in partnership with Him, moms can build strong and, and loving foundations for their families that will stand the test of time. The Bible says elsewhere in a, a very similar passage, actually, this is Proverbs 24, verse 3 and 4, by wisdom a house is built. 
And through understanding, it is established. Through knowledge, its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. This passage, I think, beautifully sums up the importance of relying on God as the builder of our homes. You know, it reminds us that that building a house requires wisdom and understanding and knowledge, all of which come from God. It's not enough to simply construct, you know, walls and rooms to live in. We have to fill those rooms with these rare and beautiful treasures. And these treasures could be anything from love, joy, peace, to creativity, laughter, and discipline. As mothers, you, you have a unique opportunity to instill these treasures in your children and create a safe, loving environment that honors God. Through prayer and faithfulness, we can ensure that our homes are built on a strong foundation of wisdom and understanding and knowledge and are filled with these rare treasures that glorify God. So trust in God to be the builder of your home. That's the first thing that we need to do. Furthermore, as we continue reading, the psalmist also highlights the busyness of the home. Can we hit that next slide? There it is. The busyness of the home. Now, as the psalmist continues, he writes in verse 2 of this same chapter, It is useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat, for God gives rest to his loved ones. Now, I don't care if you're a stay-at-home mom or a working mom or a single mom. You're probably pretty busy. You work from early in the morning until late at night. Motherhood is a never-ending battle against dirty dishes and piles of laundry and temper tantrums and teenage drama. When, when you're a mom, you become a professional cook, a referee, a maid, a dietitian, a teacher, a seamstress, a counselor, a disciplinarian, a coach, a taxi driver, and so many other things, and all of it with no salary involved. In our fast-paced culture of nonstop work, real rest seems all too elusive. And, and many parents, I think, really compound the problem by putting their kids in like every sport and extracurricular activity imaginable. And so it keeps them running constantly from soccer to play practice to volleyball to football to, to, so- to I said soccer already, but you're probably going back to soccer. And then you've got marching band and, and, and basketball. And I mean, it's just one thing after another all the time, nonstop. And it's usually motivated with the well-intentioned desire to give your children opportunities and experiences that they'll enjoy, but it's at the expense of rest and relaxation and downtime. And studies show time and time again that all this busyness results in higher stress levels for parents and kids and less overall happiness in the family. God thinks rest is so important that he gave it its own engraved commandment, right? He instructed the Israelites in Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. This is the Ten Commandments. You have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. And this includes you, your sons, and your daughters. Ask any any physician and they'll tell you, that rest is essential for physical and mental health. Psychology today lists some symptoms of being you know, overly worn out and, and burned out, including chronic fatigue, insomnia, forgetfulness, impaired concentration, loss of appetite, anxiety, depression, anger, and, and a depleted immune system, which makes you more vulnerable to colds and flus and other immuno-related medical problems. On the other hand, Rest and relaxation restores our energy, repairs our bodies, clears our thoughts, improves our focus, lifts our moods, stimulates creativity, and allows us to get much more accomplished with much less effort. Your mind and body require rest. And the same is true for your soul. And that's why Jesus invites in Matthew 11, verse 28 and 29, come to me. All of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. 
Are there any moms here who feel weary and worn out? You feel like maybe you're carrying a lot of burdens? Then this invitation is for you. Jesus invites you to come to Him and experience rest for your souls. Do you remember the story of Mary and Martha? That one steps on a lot of mom's toes, I think. Uh, so Jesus comes to visit these two sisters. And, and as soon as he gets there, and he's got like his 12 disciples with him. So it's a big crowd of people. Martha immediately hurries into the kitchen and just busies herself. She's got all these preparations to make. She's got all this work to be done and chores to be completed. Meanwhile, Mary just sits down quietly at Jesus' feet and listens to him talk. And after a while, of course, Mary gets a little irritated, or Martha gets a little irritated with Mary, right? She gets mad and she, she complains and she kind of yells at her a little bit in front of Jesus and, and says, Jesus, tell her to help me out. And Jesus, you know, he calmly reprimands Martha and commends Mary saying, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about all these details, but there's only one thing that's worth being concerned about. And Mary has found it. Martha learned the hard way that some things are more important than getting all the chores done and getting everything else accomplished and tidying the house and making dinner and, and all those things. Like Martha, many moms, I think, need to learn the importance of taking time out of the busyness of life and just sitting quietly at Jesus' feet. Take a day off. Rest and enjoy the rest that God gives to those He loves. And of course, that's, that's a commission for the rest of us too, right? Like the kids and the husbands and everybody. You have to give mom a day off. Allow her to rest. Don't put so many demands on her all the time. And finally, in addition to the builder of the home and the busyness of the home, Psalm 127 also spotlights the blessings of the home. Raising kids isn't easy. They can be quite a challenge, but the Bible constantly assures parents that children are not meant to be a burden, but a blessing. Solomon puts it this way in verses 3 through 5. He says, Children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from Him. Children born to a young man are like arrows in a warrior's hand. How joyful is the man whose quiver is full of them. Now, this, these last couple of verses are addressed directly to dads rather than moms, but they apply to moms just as equally. You know, children are a gift from God meant to bring joy. And it might not always feel like that. You know, when, when they smear chocolate pudding all over their bodies because they think it's lotion, or, or when they get the motorized wheels of a train stuck in their hair right after you told them not to take it off the track, or when you, you hear he keeps touching me every five minutes from the back seat on an eight-hour road trip, it can drive you kind of crazy. And yes, all of those things are from experience. Um, <laughs> and when they're teenagers, it can drive you a whole different kind of crazy, right? I, I can't even get into it because mine, they're, yeah. But regardless of the challenges that we face as parents, we, we need to see our children as the blessings that they are in every stage of life. As parents, we've been entrusted uh, with this tremendous responsibility to raise our children well. And the first step in fulfilling that responsibility is to recognize the value and worth of our children. When we view our children as blessings from God and gifts from God, it changes the way we approach parenting. You know, instead of just trying to survive each day, we can find joy in, in the raising of our children and, and in the journey and in those little moments that make it worthwhile. And as we invest time and energy into nurturing our kids and guiding our kids, we'll see them grow into the people that God created them to be. And that's a reward worth more than any treasure in the world. And I love the imagery that Solomon uses here comparing children to arrows in a quiver. You know, arrows are not intended to just stay in the quiver, right? I mean, they're, they're intended and designed to be you know, loaded into the bow and drawn back and then released toward their target. And I think that describes parenting in a lot of different ways. Um, similarly, parenting 
ultimately comes down to aiming our kids in the right direction, holding them tightly for a time, and then letting them go. We aim them toward Jesus and hold them tightly to our cheeks, equipping them with values, character, and skills that will help them make wise decisions, overcome challenges, and achieve their goals. And just as an archer must release the arrow and let it fly toward its target, parents must eventually release their children and allow them to pursue their own journey, praying that they hit the target. No matter what stage of life your kids are in, toddlers or teens or 20s, they are a blessing from God. Be grateful for them. Pray for them. Make sure that they, they know they are loved and valued beyond measure. Point them in the right direction and then let them fly. So here are God's blueprints for moms looking to renovate or remodel their homes. First, moms need to work in tandem with God, the master builder, relying on him to guide and direct you as you build your families. Furthermore, moms need to rest from all the busyness of home and work life. Spend some time at Jesus' feet. You're more valuable to your families if you're well rested anyway. And finally, rejoice in your children. They are blessings and gifts from God. Treasure them as such. Unless the Lord builds a house, its builders labor over it in vain. When God does build your house, though, you can bet it will be a thing of beauty. I hope you'll join me next week as we continue this series and we discover God's divine design for singles. So if you're not married yet or you are single again through death or divorce, Pay special attention. Join us next week for that message because that one's meant just for you. In the meantime, I want to close with a word of prayer for all of our moms here at the Grove. Would you pray with me? Dear God, we come before you today to lift up all the mothers out, out there and in here. We thank you for the gift of children and the opportunity to raise them to know and love you. We thank you that you give moms the strength to face the challenges that come with parenting and the wisdom to know how to navigate each situation. Help them to remember that children are a blessing and a joy, even when they're difficult to handle. Give them patience when they're feeling frustrated and grace when they make mistakes. We pray that you would guide them as they aim their children toward the target of a life lived for you. We ask for your provision and protection over their families and for your peace to fill their hearts and their homes. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Mm -hmm.